Hello, LinkedIn. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. However you celebrate, I hope you had a great break and I hope you're able to spend time with family. May peace and joy be yours during this period of time. Hey, I wanted to put a little video together that covered um, video quality and audio quality. A lot of you have asked me how I obtain the video and the audio quality I get today. And since we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're in the middle of a slow time, well, if there can be a slow time in a $3 trillion industry, we're in that slow time. And then we're also over holiday break. So I thought, no time like the present. I'll go ahead and throw a few things together. So what we're talking about is video quality, whether you're producing a vlog or whether you're taking part in a Teams or a um, Zoom meeting, you want your video to look the best it can and your audio to sound the best it can. Now, today I'll cover some of the basics, uh, the top four things that you can really focus on getting better on your video and audio quality. In another video I'll post, part two, I'll cover some of the more advanced things you can do. If you feel like spending some extra time and money to upgrade your setup at home, I'll take you through some of those things as well. But today, let's focus on how you look to the people on the other side of the camera. And to focus on video quality and audio quality, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about four areas. One, bandwidth, your internet bandwidth, whether it's at your home or your office, how you deal with that. Two um, is going to be your hardware, your camera and your microphone how you can improve those things. Three is your lighting, which is one of the most overlooked things that, that um, gets pushed off to the side in any video editing session. And four is your presentation. So those four areas we're gonna cover today. On internet bandwidth, internet bandwidth can be checked at speedtest.net. Um, if you don't like what you have, if you're less than 50 megabits per second, you might wanna look at your modem and at your router. The combo modem router that comes with most providers setups like Xfinity Comcast, where I'm at, is a combo device and they don't put a ton of time into it or a ton of research into it. And it's, it's meant for just the basics. So if you've got basic utilization, you've got basic internet use at home, that's great. But if, you've, if you're using your lights and your speakers and your TVs and your, your iPhone um, or your Android device and your watch and your iPad and your computer and all those things, you can get up really high to the number of devices you've got concurrently connected. And those out of the box stock devices don't typically handle many devices very well, it has to do a lot of parsing and therefore you get choppy video and audio. So you might wanna look into upgrading that uh, and or your, your Wi-Fi, your, your router, your Wi-Fi gateway, uh, either one of those two things can be upgraded by you. You can use your own equipment. Just go to the uh, provider's website. Like in my, my case, it's Xfinity and Comcast. They'll show you acceptable devices you can use. Once you get your own device and set it up, which is not that difficult at all, uh, you can stop paying them the lease on the device they give you as part of your setup there. And it's actually a savings if, you're, if you do it for more than a year or so. So that's one thing you can check if your bandwidth is, is acceptable and you're still struggling with throughput. On the Wi-Fi side of things, if you look at your laptop where you're connecting and you've only got a bar, maybe two of connectivity, look into expanding or, or enhancing your Wi-Fi router. I use a device called the Eero, E-E-R-O. It's a, what they call a mesh device where you can set up and plug in different pods, if you will, at different levels of your home. And each of them acts as a Wi-Fi receptor. So you're really expanding your, 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 your oomph, if you will, the, the, um, the connectivity that you have on your Wi-Fi system. So I'd recommend either one of those two things. Netgear makes the CM700, for example, is what, what, which is what we have here. Great modem, and it replaces what comes with uh, Xfinity and Comcast. And then the Eero system is what I use on the Wi-Fi side of things. Second is hardware. So the second thing that really controls your quality of your video and audio is your hardware. Now, what I mean by hardware is your camera and your microphone. Most of the time on a laptop or on a desktop, in my case, it's the iMac from Apple, the camera and the microphone are fine for most purposes, but if you wanna up your game and you want better video quality and better audio quality, you can simply enhance that by adding a, an external USB webcam. Uh, uh, Logitech makes a nice one of those called the Logitech C920 or C921. Plugs into your USB port. It's normally plug and play regardless of your environment and you can enhance what you have today. Notoriously, the laptops and the iMacs and the desktops and the MacBooks, they're fine for most purposes, but for today's demands, video quality, work from home, you might wanna upgrade those and the Logitech makes a good solution because the Logitech C920 has a built-in microphone, dual microphones actually, so you get HD webcam and you get you know the potential for stereo uh, on your sound side of things. So good solution, not very expensive, $70, $80. Uh, you can upgrade your, your hardware. 
Uh, the third thing is lighting. So lighting is one of the most overlooked things in video quality. Most people assume that uh, lighting is, is pretty standard, but for just about any camera, better lighting makes sense. Now, there are a lot of LED providers that make a simple LED external light that you can plug into your USB port. Mr. Nielsen tells me about a, a Halo device he uses, a Halo Travel Pro uh, lighting system plugs right into USB, clips on the top of your laptop or the back of your, your screen, and gives you light on the front of your subject, you, the person who's doing the talking, not behind you. When it's behind you, it causes shadows, a dark face. If nothing else, turn the lights on in front of you, but even better is an LED lighting system that you can plug in. It's not a system, it's just a little circular light that mounts on the back of your laptop or your desktop. Really good solution, great way to change your video quality and really have a, a significant impact without spending a lot of money. Uh, the last thing is your presentation. Presentation is what you look like and what's behind you. Now, with regard to what's behind you, I know a lot of people use these, uh, these canned backdrops that you can install from Zoom or Teams, and I know Teams even has one now where it arranges everyone in seats. Um, pretty cool stuff. Personally, I kind of like to see behind me what's behind me. I think it adds a, a level of uh, personable uh, communication in the conversation, but it's, it's a matter of preference. Uh, if you like the backdrops, they're great. Uh, I might recommend a, a simple green screen that you could get behind you, which takes away some of the um, uh, dithering that occurs around the image when you move around a little bit. The green screen, screen makes it a solid backdrop for whatever you want to put on your backdrop if you do want to use those backdrops. Um, the second is how you look. I mean, how you look can mean whether you showered and put on fresh clothes that day, or it can mean where your eyes are looking. So um, obviously we all want to look our best when we have these types of business meetings from our home environment. So uh, treating your, your day like a business day makes a lot of sense. Getting up, prepping for the meetings, the same way you would if you were walking into an office in a conference room is important. But secondly is eye contact. I think it makes a lot of sense to establish eye contact with somebody you're in a video conference with. Now, using some of the solutions I've laid out here today, the Logitech webcam, for example, if you mount that on your screen, it might be best if you're, if you're looking at the image of other people to put those images of the other people up as close to that screen as possible so that you're making as close to eye contact as possible. Uh, if your camera's away off on the left side of your monitor and uh, your, your image of the people you're looking at is over here, then during this conference call, you're going to be looking like this the whole time. And it just, you lose some of the genuineness of the, of the nature of the call. So I would encourage you to pay some attention to that as well. Um, so yeah, that's all I've got for today. Just wanted to offer some easy tips on how to make your video conferencing experience and your work from home experience even better. And stay tuned, I'll have a different video that goes into more detail if you really want to spend some time and money on your setup and, uh, and, and drive that to the next level. Have a great 2021, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.